our 90-day mission, I remember when we landed, we were excited. We would you know, have three months to explore this region around our, our landing site. And we've basically blown the doors off that. Um, you know, for six years now, we've been doing classic field geology on Mars, learning about the planet and its ancient past. And it's been, there have been powerful revelations that have come well after that prime mission. Two years into the mission, so well past the prime mission, the right front wheel stopped working and the wheel doesn't spin. So when we drive, we drive backwards, dragging that wheel, and it would cut a furrow. And so it, it actually turned out to be yet another scientific instrument or scientific investigation because it now trenched as we would drive along, revealing what's just beneath the surface. One thing that we seem to be finding almost anywhere we're digging this trench are these widespread deposits of various kinds of salts and minerals. They look this brilliant white or yellow in the color images, um, and that's because they're uh, either sulfur or silica or salts uh, of various kinds. And the really important thing about these minerals, and salts in particular, is that the only way they form is with water. So the fact that we're finding these salts is real evidence that there was hot water over a very widespread area, not just little isolated pockets. Mars really could have been a place that supported life. And without these rovers driving over these vast distances, far beyond their expectations, we would never have known that. That's one of the great discoveries that Spear did well after its prime mission and as a result of one of the um, most serious uh, mechanical failures we've had on either rover. Mars is a pretty harsh place. We've had dust storms before. We have really low power situations in winter. We've had other small glitches that have caused us some tense moments. But um, the spirit seems to always find a way of turning some kind of adversity into uh, something positive. In April of 2009, uh, we were driving on the west side of home plate after we were unsuccessful in trying to go other ways around home plate. And the rover broke through what I would describe as a perfectly camouflaged tiger trap. And we were driving on terrain that we had successfully driven on before, but suddenly the rover broke through a crust and was now embedded in some loose, soft material. It's almost like quicksand for the rover. And with just five wheels spinning, the only thing that was happening was the rover was sinking deeper into this uh, material. So we stopped and we did a very ambitious ground uh, test campaign where we built a sandbox on the ground, used one of our engineering rovers, and experimented with techniques to try to get the rover unstuck. Uh, the reality is, is it's very difficult with just a five wheel rover to get it unstuck from this difficult predicament. We have a very ambitious stationary science campaign for the rover. I mean, for six years we've been driving both Spirit and Opportunity, not really taking any time to stop and smell the roses. Um, there's a lot of uh, lander science that one can do. What these rovers have done is that they have made Mars a familiar place. Mars is now our neighborhood. Uh, my team goes to work on Mars every day. And that, I think, is the, the great intangible contribution from these rovers, is that Mars is no longer this you know, strange, um, unknown world. I mean, yes, it's still mysterious, but um, much of Mars is now known to us as, as a familiar place.